way of introduction, we take you into the office of Major General Brereton, who commands the Tactical Invasion Air Force. As commander of the 9th Air Force, I am fully aware of our responsibilities. Together with the Royal Air Force, we shall be the spearhead of the coming invasion, supporting the ground forces of the United Nations in that final mighty blow which will rid the world of Nazism and liberate Europe. The Ninth Air Force is not new to this task. We fought in close support of the British Eighth Army in its magnificent drive from El Alamon to Cape Vaughan. There in the Western Desert, we learned that cooperation is the secret of success. Spitfires of the Allied Nations squadrons of the Royal Air Force have flown with us constantly and protected us on these missions. The story of their work together is one that may well serve as an example to all the armed forces of the United Nations, not only during this war, but in the peace to follow as well. Right now, as this story is presented to you, Allied airmen are in the skies over Europe, hitting again and again at the heart of the enemy's staggering war machine. I'm confident that we will be ready and that we have the strength and the determination to strike the final knockout blow. What you are about to see now are pictures of 9th Air Force B-26 Marauders engaged in what is known as a double header. A typical day's work in which these medium bombers stab at Nazi defense installations in the morning, return to refuel, and then deliver another hefty punch in the afternoon. 15 second intervals between each takeoff and the squadrons begin to form up for the rendezvous point. These revealing pictures have been turned in by a combat camera unit flying on the mission. Infrared film was used to obtain well-defined pictures, telescoping altitude, penetrating weather barriers, and so securing clear shots of the bomb flashes. This double-header attack takes in supply dumps, airfields, and rocket gun emplacements. Main opposition encountered is heavy flak, but the marauders sail in and deliver their cookies. Particular attention is given to Luftwaffe airfields in France, Belgium and Holland. Sticks of bombs ripple across the runways. Raids such as this help to put a crimp in Nazi night raiders' efforts to attack London and South East England. The technique of bombing comes under several headings, pattern, saturation or precision. Call it what you like, it still adds up to a nasty mess. Bomb doors close over the morning's work. It'll be well fully to appreciate the intensity of the round-the-clock Allied air blows, of which this is part in the second front softening up process. We are back now at the home base, with the returned aircraft parked close together to facilitate servicing. This is the 45-minute lunch interval, when men and machines are fed. Ordinarily, the aircraft would be dispersed over a very large area to prevent severe damage in the event of enemy action. But this is just a breathing spell. In under an hour, ground personnel have the planes rebombed, refueled, and rearmed, and the afternoon sortie is underway. the marauders are heading out on a mission to Holland. Formed up into boxes of 18 aircraft, they set course for another haunt of the Luftwaffe. For some reason best known to the Germans, the challenge to come up and fight is not accepted. 
Entering the battle zone, the crews don their flak helmets. Here's the afternoon ration of shell bursts. Little puffs like cotton wool, but each one shedding a hail of steel splinters. Bomb selector switches are operated by the bombigator, the American term given to the man who combines the role of bombardier and navigator, and the shower bath of bombs is turned on a Nazi aerodrome. Another bomb bay is emptied of its load. The 500 pounders drop, wobble a bit, and then plunge earthwards. Keep your eye on this stick as it goes down. If you study carefully the bottom left hand corner of the screen, you'll see several German aircraft like tiny white specks on the ground. Some are in the act of taking off as the bombs strike. Now you know what a double header is. The expression seems to invite the use of that old saying, heads we win, tails they lose.